fact, um, there are a couple of motivations for that. Um, a lot of the open source folks were looking for alternatives to ACPI because um, it wasn't very open. It was owned by a handful of, uh, a double handful of vendors and who controlled that spec and um, it wasn't an open process and they felt like, gee, we don't have any way to input into that spec and we need to do that in order to make it viable for our use. Um, and so they were looking around for alternatives and we, we don't really want them to use alternatives. We would like them to use ACPI. Um, so I think that was the primary motive to make it, uh, motivation to make it uh, more open and available and allow lots of people to have input into the spec and make the spec better. Um, also, just as a side issue, it was the process, legally, business-wise, how that, that ACPI spec was created and how updates were made was a rather painful <laughs> business process. So uh, moving it in and adopting the same a approach as um, the other UAFI specs uh, made a lot of sense. So um, that was done a while back, and um, it seems to be working out very well. And now we're able to coordinate um, the content between ACPI, uh, UEFI, PI, et cetera, and coming out. Come, we just recently released the, uh, those three specs together uh, with a lot of coordinated content between them. So um, this is a, a great opportunity. And as a result of that, I'm thrilled that we're actually getting ACPI participation in this organization in PlugFest. I'd like to see us being able to do more ACPI-related plugging and testing at future PlugFests. So um, talk to your folks in your organization um, and um, see what makes sense to, uh, to do ACPI-related testing. So all that said, as an intro, uh, we have today David Box from Intel's ACPI team to do, I think, the first presentation in this space. So it's great. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, no pressure there with that introduction, I see. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I am David Box. I uh, work at Intel in our open source technology team, which is a part of our uh, uh, SSG division at Intel. And um, I work on ACPI CA specifically, um, not on ACPI Linux drivers, but specifically on the ACPI CA project. I work uh, under the management of Robert Moore, who is the head of that project. And I'll be um, talking a little bit about what ACPI CA is. I can't really um, give it any um, um, do uh, justice in the little time that I have here. Um, but uh, I'll try to cover the basis. Um, but the focus is going to be on ACPI CA user space tools and how developers uh, can use these tools in order to create ASL code, AML, um, and um, be able to perform advanced debug. So uh, agenda, just a quick introduction. The two tools I'll be talking about are IASL, and if you do work on ACPI CA, or rather ACPI, um, it's a tool you're probably familiar with, um, though we're, we don't get the sense that people are familiar with all the features of IASL, and so I'll be going through those today. Then ACPI exec, a very powerful tool that we use for debugging our own uh, work that we do in ACPI CA, and we think that uh, there's a, a great opportunity for developers to be able to use that as well. And then um, towards the end, um, if I can hurry through the slides and a uh, call to action as to uh, what I think uh, developers here should be, uh, should be doing with the content of this presentation. Okay, so uh, what is ACPI CA? Uh, it's the component architecture. And now, because there are enough acronyms in this presentation that start with the letter A, um, I, I'll try to refer to it as just the component architecture. Um, and so the component architecture, the, those two words come from the way in which it was designed, which was to be a set of individual software components that together implement the software interfaces, at least, of the ACPI specification. Uh, at the center of that is the AML interpreter. This is what's responsible for uh, taking in the firmware code um, and uh, decoding it for the operating system, and it's surrounded by these additional utilities that allow it to manage that, that allow it to walk the namespace that's provided, that allow it to uh, find objects, execute the methods that are written, um, in order, and also uh, 
use the operating system services for hardware I.O. and uh, memory allocation and such. Um, it's been around for a long time. Uh, ACPICA uh, has been around since the early days of ACPI. It was originally uh, written uh, as a, a simple uh, reference design uh, that OEMs, or, or rather um, operating systems, could use uh, to kind of uh, mirror how they would perform ACPI. However, it's just morphed into the way many operating systems, or at least a few, um, uh, actually do uh, ACPI. Uh, Linux, of course, as the prime example of that, which takes the ACPI code that we provide and dumps it as a whole unit into their operating system to perform those ACPI services. Uh, ACPI CA is actively developed. We release on a four to six week cycle. And yes, uh, some of that's going to be bug fixes. Uh, some of that's going to be work on latest revisions of the spec, as we're now seeing with ACPI 6.0. Um, but a lot of that is also going to be in new features that we try to provide. Uh, we get feedback from some developers that, are, that work on ACPI and say, hey, it would be really great if there, there was this feature, a particular feature in it. And we try to work on that and get those features that we know are important to developers into the code. Uh, something to keep in mind and something that we want to stress with this audience here. Whether you're working on it yourself or you know other team members who are, um, that we are very open to getting that feedback and to working with other developers in order to provide those, those utilities that can help them perform their work better. And it is, it is of course, open source. And so we don't, don't, don't want to leave that out. Um, it's open source. The, the code is freely available, freely released by Intel. Um, and uh, uh, we encourage participation from developers um, in order that we know that developers want to, um, of course, contribute code that helps um, them implement their systems, but as well, you know, contribute code, uh, any tools that you have as well that you, that you um, see could be of benefit to the greater community. Uh, so why learn about these tools? Uh, of course, um, it all centers around having working firmware. And I think I'm going to be short for time, so I'll just skip over this slide. Um, so a uh, uh, um, final summary here uh, to get make sure everyone has a picture is that we're really dealing with two sets of code. We have the ACPI code, and that's what you guys or you know, the people that you work with are going to be writing. That's the static data tables as well as the dynamic tables, the DSDT, SSDTs. We have lots of time. Oh, OK. Well, I, I've practiced, and I don't know. I've seemed to run over, so we'll see how much time I have. OK, great. Um, so um, the, the code that firmware developers write, the static tables, SSDT, DSDTs that contain the dynamic code, executable code. And there's the ACPI CA code. This is the code that's going to be in the kernel that's responsible for reading that code, as well as uh, software tools that we provide, user space tools that we provide, a couple I'll be, I'll be talking about, um, that in interprets this code as well, works with this code as well. And, and the, the way I drew this picture here was to show that and to have a reminder for people or, or to tell people that we have code here that understands ACPI. We have code here that knows how to work with AML, that knows how to, it creates data structures around it, that knows how to navigate the structures. Um, and it's open source. And so if you're working on the code and you feel like, hey, there's something that you need, something that might be missing, don't reinvent the wheel. We already have the source here. Um, and if we uh, can't you know, come up with a new use of it for a new tool, maybe we can simply provide a new option to our existing tools that allows you to um, perform your work more effectively, and we'll go through with some examples here. Uh, so the first tool I'll be talking about is IASL. That is, of course, the Intel ASL compiler responsible for taking ASL code, the human-readable uh, ACPI code, and converting it to AML code, and having the capability as well to disassemble that back to ASL code. But I, I say here more than um, what you may know, because um, even if you're working with ACPI and you're familiar with this tool already, it does have many features that we try to provide. Um, and I'll be walking through those uh, just here. Um, but uh, even as, in its use as a compiler, uh, the, one of the most important features that it has is the ability to catch bad code. And by bad code, I'm not simply talking about 
you know, code that won't compile. Obviously, if it doesn't compile, then it's not usable. But you know, we have a list of, whole list of warnings and remarks that get spit out of IASL. And, and those warnings and remarks, uh, a lot of them come straight out of this ACPI specification. And so we try to catch those things that are right in the specification that are things that are, are, are limits on what you should be able to do. And maybe we put that right into IASL. And so uh, even if you're not using IASL as your main compiler to, to you know, spit out the binary code that you're going to put into a BIOS, you can get a lot of benefit simply just by running your, your, your firmware through this tool. Uh, and a list of warning examples that you can get from ISL. I don't intend for you guys to sit here and read it, um, but uh, if you can just look at the first example, uh, you can, you can uh, see a, a case where here we're storing a 64-bit integer into a 32-bit table, um, and you can see that uh, ISL will warn you and say, hey, based on the DSTT you passed me, you can't do that, or you shouldn't be able to do that because the version number is less than 2, 32-bit. And so you get some hints as to why, not just what the problem is, but why the problem is there. And so we have a whole slew of these things that ISL um, can warn you about. And so if you, you run, your, run your code through this tool and, and take a look at these warnings that come out um, and you know, try to catch errors that might happen out on the field um, in, you know, before, before you send your code out there. Uh, but what else can I ASL do? Well, it's uh, not only can it compile and disassemble your uh, uh, dynamic tables, your AML tables, it can also do it with your static tables as well. And so here's an example of an 8-pick table right off of firmware. And we can take that, pass it to IASL, come out with an ASCII file that gives us a, a, a very neatly, nicely formatted output of that table. Uh, and this is, this is uh, done with intent to allow developers to be able to easily see, hey, I have my specification for my APIC. You know, I can actually take a look at that and look line by line, field by field, and see if the specification lines up with what I'm actually writing in the code. And so uh, something to take to, 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 to use to your advantage. Um, as well, ISL um, can also generate templates for you. And so we can do this for any publicly available uh, ACPI table, whether it's in the ACPI specification or some other publicly available document. We can take that table information and code it into ISL so that all you have to do is pass in that four character description of the table and we'll spit out a gen generic template for you with all your fields. All you have to do is edit them. And then uh, you can compile them right back into that binary blob and then flash them, flash them and test them. And so a uh, pretty useful feature. We don't think a lot of people are aware that is there. And it takes a lot of the, uh, the error out of having to build these yourself because it comes right out for you. Uh, so um, well, what am I trying to show here with this picture? So ISL is a compiler, and of course what a compiler is going to do is going to take information of one form, typically human readable file, right? And it's going to convert it into information of another form, which is going to be typically a machine, machine code of some sort. But to do that, it's going to have to pull out the useful information and store that somewhere. It's going to store that in data structures. It's going to store that in a parse tree. And with that, it can take that and manipulate it. Um, but with ISL, we should know that this is not simply the contents of a program. This is actually going to be the description of the platform written in ACPI. This is going to be all your devices, your resources, or your methods for controlling the power, um, for um, configuring the device. All that's there sitting in the data that, AC, that ISL has pulled out of the ACPI code. And so we can use that to manipulate it, uh, to create any meaningful form of data that we want, not just ASL code. And so uh, not too long ago, we had actually an, an OS engineer who uh, was writing drivers. And um, I'll, I'll just say he wasn't too pleased by the number of times he would you know, try to write a driver for GPIO and find that the GPIO was not correctly routed in, in the ACPI table. Um, and it was a pain to take a look at the ASL and see, hey, where exactly are all of my GPIO pins? 
And so he suggested to us, hey, can we have a, you know, you have all this data there, can we just have an output what all the controllers are and what all the pin connections are under them so I can just see them on one page. You can't do that right now with ASL. And so that's what we did. We came out with a resource map file that allows you to see all of your controllers, not just GPIOs. We can do this for UARTs, I2C, um, SMBus. Um, and you can take a look and see where all your pins are, you know, what all the, what all the, uh, the assignments are. And, and you can see uh, what device they're attached to, what device they're not attached to, that they should be attached to. And so for this, you can take your schematic, take a look at your GPIO, or, you know, where things should be routed, and find out exactly based off of how you wrote the ASL and how you compiled it, um, if, if everything's routed where it should be. An idea that we didn't come up with, that firmware guys didn't come with, but an OS engineer come, came up with. Um, but something I should note, it, it did come out of frustration. So it's where the best ideas come out of, right? So, you know, the, the point here is that we, we have this data, we know how to work with the code again. And so if you have ideas, if you have things that frustrate you, that say, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm working with this code and it'd be great if I had fill in the blank, you know, we can probably provide that, provide that uh, tooling for you. Another thing that we pushed for in uh, ACPI 6.0 was to finally uh, change the syntax of ASL. ASL uses a syntax that's uh, uh, essentially Polish notation, which is, <laughs> which is, um, I see some people, I don't know if they're laughing about, but uh, it's, um, uh, it's, it's difficult to read. Uh, if, if it's, um, that's, uh, that's the best I can say for it, right? Uh, if it's, uh, if it's a simple statement, it's not too bad, but as you get more complex statements, it's just, it's just a tear to read, and uh, it's uh, error prone to write, you know, quite, quite honestly. And so this example speaks for itself. Uh, we have symbolic syntax support. We support now all of uh, standard operations, so mathematical operations, logical operations, compound assignments. Um, and it, we see this as a way for uh, you know, developers to, to write correct code the first time. And, uh, what, and this is support is now in IASL, and it will do this by default. And so yes, we are calling the top code legacy. Um, and so. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's now symbolic syntax support included automatically. Um, and I should note that both of these examples here produce identical AML output. And so you will still get the same binary blob out of ISL if you write it this way. Yeah. Um, and uh, though we do still remain, uh, uh, keep 100% uh, per legacy support, and so you, you could still write it um, in, in the old legacy format and still get the same output from ISL. So that's a summary of uh, the IASL tool. The next tool that we'll talk about is ACPI exec. Um, and I think I want to take a, a break here and, and just ask a question. Um, how many people here work with ACPI? Okay, cool. Actually, that's more than I expected considering uh, it's a UEFI event. And I know this is the first time ACPI is, is, is a, formerly a part of the, the UEFI group. Um, how many people here heard of IASL? of those people that rose their hand. Okay. <laughs> How many people here know about ACPI exec? Oh, raise your hand high so I can see you. ACPI exec, two people out of the, what, 15 or so. So, uh, and then that's the, the exact sense that we get that we just have not advertised this tool enough. ACPI exec is, it's all in the name. It allows you to execute ACPI code in user space. So outside of the kernel, in ring three, the ASL code that you write, the AML code that you, you write, you can execute it in user space in a program. That means you don't have to have the machine that you wrote the code for to test it. You can test it using this utility. Now, there are some caveats with that. Um, the main caveat is going to be that you can't actually talk to hardware. Uh, you can't talk to hardware, of course, because you're not running in the kernel and you don't have the privilege to do so. However, um, you are still running the identical kernel code. So if you're writing ASL code, AML code, 
it's going to end up on a platform that's going to be running an operating system that is using ACPICA in order to communicate with ACPI hardware, then running it through ACPI exec will give you code output that is the same identical output as what you would get if it was actually running on that hardware, running with that kernel. Uh, you, with ACPI exec, you get a debugging interface, and so you get a prompt, and you get the standard debugging utilities. You can step through the code line by line. You can see the output of statements line by line. And you can easily automate it. Uh, so what does it look like? It looks as simple as that. Just pass in your DSDT, your SSDT, put this in your builds. Why? Because, as I said, you get the exact output that you would get if this code ended up running on a kernel running ACPICA. In this case, uh, what, what are we seeing? We're seeing that uh, between the DSDT here and the SSDT here, we had a namespace collision. We had an object that was uh, written twice in both, in, in both, uh, uh, in, in both files. And this is a, a common thing that we're seeing more and more as we're seeing more modularity with uh, ACPI code. We're seeing more and more SSDTs being written. And you only get four characters to describe a device. And so it's not uncommon now to see namespace collision. But if you're not able to run that until it gets on the hardware and, and you're running an operating system, you don't see that yet. And so you're delayed. With ACPI exec, you can run it right away and see immediately the errors that you would have got. Here's another example showing how uh, it's a bit more complex. So it's maybe a bit noisy here. But why, what I intended to show was uh, what ACPI exec looks like when you're actually running it. And then the top line that starts with D is simply debug. And we're actually calling this PMC function. And it shows what it looks like. The, the percent sign shows that we are actually in the, in the debugger. And we can, as we hit enter, we're stepping through line by line. And we can see the output. So we can actually, we, even though we can't communicate with hardware, we can still execute the ASL statements and verify that they give us the output that we intended to see. And this is not something new. This is not something that um, we even really wrote for developers. We wrote this for ourselves. Um, we use this in our ASL test suite. And so we have over 2,000 tests. And these are 2,000, over 2,000 ASL files that automatically get compiled with IASL and automatically ran through ACPI exec. And we're looking for these errors every time. And we're testing things to basically validate all of our changes. Anytime we make changes to ACPI CA code, we run it through this test suite and we validate that we haven't made any changes that break anything. And so this is a well-used tool. We've used this for a long time. And so, but we invite developers to use it themselves to test it out and see see how the, it might help them in their um, in their development process. And, and uh, as well, we also use it as our main tool for bug reports. So bugs that get opened against ACPICA, uh, one of the first things that we'll do again is that we can ask users for a dump of their of, of their uh, DSDT from their machine, run it through ACPI exec, and we will most of the time. I, I, it's, I can't really think of a time that we haven't seen the exact same error that they saw when they ran it on their machine. Um, sometimes it comes back as a bug in ACPICA, we fix it. Sometimes it comes back as a bug in firmware, and we can't fix it. But either way, most of the time, we can get down to a diagnosis of what the, what the problem is. Uh, another thing that we uh, pushed in the ACPI 6.0 spec was a simple printf macro. And this was because it, it, in order to create any meaningful debug statements uh, in, in ASL, it gets pretty complicated. Uh, if you take a look at the top, that's one, two, three, four, five concatenates in order to print out uh, what, if we were just using a simple printf, would look like the bottom. And that's what we have now with ACPI. with uh, the printf support in ACPI. And this is uh, new in the ACPI 6.0 specification. Again, example speaks for itself. 
Um, so I think um, Dick was right. I did kind of fly through that fairly quickly. Um, and so in the, in, the, in the words of Oliver Twist, that uh, you might be thinking uh, more, please. Is, 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 is there any more that we can provide? And uh, the answer is uh, absolutely yes. Um, we have other ideas as well, other things that we've done. Um, we've been told, for example, um, by uh, firmware developers, um, or we've heard anyway, um, a little birdie told us that um, it wasn't uh, <laughs> Uh, it wasn't too uncommon for de de uh, firmware developers to put magic numbers in the code in order to be able to search and find a very specific location in the code in order to, f to, to uh, make a change. Um, and with, AC with uh, ACPI, if you're, if you're uh, compiling with ISL, there's no need to do that. Okay, we, we can give you an AML so offset and tell you exactly where to make that change. No need to be searching. Um, and we have plenty of other, other things that we have done as well, uh, more than I can list here. Um, but the point I make with this slide is that, um, yes, we can do more, but the best ideas are going to come from the firmware developers who are working on this every day, because you're the ones who are going through the frustration. You're the ones who see the need for certain tools. And again, we have the code that can manipulate, that can talk ACPI, and it's open source. And so talk with us. Um, so what's the call to action? The call to action is to use these tools. Use, uh, use C, look at the output from IASL. Use ACPI exec in your builds to automatically see what errors might be coming out that you won't see until they end up on a machine. Um, there, everything's available from acpica.org. Uh, all the uh, documentation, uh, specifications, source code, links to source code, binaries for both Windows and Linux are there. Uh, ask questions uh, at, our, at our mailing list, provide beep feedback, um, and, and suggest new ideas. You can go to our uh, Bugzilla page. Um, and on there, um, yes, we, we do um, track bugs there, but we also track feature requests. So if there are things that developers see that you know, they'd like to see in, the, in our tools, please post them there. So, and thank you. That's, uh, that's all that I had. Uh, yeah, any questions?